Monica just graduated from high school and couldn't afford to go to college or university, so she needed to start earning money right away. After searching online and asking around, she decided to pursue becoming a security guard since no degree was required, and she could get licensed and start working fairly quickly if she passed the training courses. Monica signed up for a five-day training class to prepare for her state's licensing exam to become an unarmed private security guard. In the class, she learned state laws and regulations, basic security procedures, how to write incident reports, perform patrols and inspections, and respond in emergencies. After completing the training, Monica passed her licensing exam easily. She then began applying to different security companies in her city. She had two interviews before being hired by a company that provides security. Monica was hired by a security company that provides guards for wealthy clients. In her interview with the company's owner, Mr. Callahan, and operations manager, they mentioned she would be assigned to provide security for a high-profile businessman who has a large villa and luxury car. When Monica asked what would be expected of her and for more details on the client, Mr. Callahan brushed off her questions, saying, You just need to do what Mr. Pennington asks of you. No questions. We provide discreet security for our premium clients. Just focus on keeping a low profile as you work. Monica wasn't thrilled with the vague assignment details, but she needed the job. She proceeded with the required background clearance check, fitness testing, and signed multiple non-disclosure agreements with the security company to protect client confidentiality. Her first shift on the new job, Monica arrived at Mr. Pennington's sprawling villa to introduce herself to new client. She explained her security experience and qualifications, but Pennington rudely cut in. I don't care about your resume, sweetheart. Your job is to patrol the perimeter without being seen. Understand? Taken aback by his abrasive welcome, she simply replied, Yes, sir, and set off on perimeter checks every two hours on her 12-hour overnight shift. This set the tone for the strained dynamic with Mr. Pennington over subsequent shifts. Over the first couple weeks, Monica noticed Mr. Pennington had an odd stream of visitors arrive in the middle of the night, stay an hour or two, then swiftly depart. She wanted to ask questions, but remembered the security company said not to pry. The next morning, when Monica arrives for her shift, Mr. Pennington surprises her by handing her a bag. Here is your new required uniform and grooming standards for working security on my property going forward. Monica looks in the bag to find a black skirt and top, black hat, black shoes, and an electric shaver. Confused, she asks, What's all this for? Pennington states sternly, My associate will be arriving tonight for a private meeting. I need you to wear this discreet uniform and shave your head bald first. Shocked at the demand to shave her head, Monica protests, But my contract says you can't make drastic changes to expected duties or physical appearance without notice. Pennington cuts her off. It also says you need to follow client instructions. Do you want to keep this lucrative job or not? Desperate to keep her lucrative job but hating her bald head and harsh uniform, Monica finally works up the nerve to approach Mr. Pennington. Please, can we compromise on the uniform and grooming rules? I'll do anything else you ask, but I want to grow my hair back out. Pennington immediately dialed his associate, Mr. Callahan, from the security company. Keeping his steely eyes fixed on Monica, Pennington stated, The woman you sent refuses to fully comply with required appearance standards for this position. As I told you initially, I need my guards completely bald and wearing garb that allows no individuality. Sighing disappointedly into the phone, Callahan replies, I tried to select our most compliant employee for your needs, Mr. Pennington. Let me speak with Monica. Handing the phone over, Pennington glares until Monica reluctantly takes it. On the call, Callahan reminds Monica firmly, You were advised we cater to VIP clients with particular preferences. Refusing any demand can violate your contract. I suggest you follow the rules or we will be forced to immediately terminate and blacklist you from other agencies. Stunned at the threat and desperate for income, Monica dejectedly agrees to remain bald and wear whatever uniform Pennington decrees without further objection. 
Callahan says a replacement guard will arrive in 60 minutes in case she continues resisting the client's directives. Breaking down in tears during the call with Callahan after being threatened with termination for refusing to shave her head, Monica pleads, Please, isn't there any other position I can be transferred to instead of being forced to go bald? Callahan replies sternly, Stop blubbering. My patience is done. You have two options. Either follow the client's rules exactly as demanded, or you can clean out your desk immediately. I'm sending your replacement already since you refuse to comply. Trying to calm herself, Monica wipes her eyes and responds, No wait, please. I don't want to lose my job. Just tell me what Mr. Pennington requires, and I will comply without further objection. I have rent due and can't risk being terminated. Impressed by her acquiescence, Callahan states, Very well, I will call off the replacement guard. But so we are clear. If you break protocol again, you are done. Understood? Monica affirms solemnly. Returning to Pennington, Monica stands straight-faced and apologizes for her momentary non-compliance. I will adhere to whatever standards you set, regardless of how demeaning. My livelihood depends on keeping this position no matter what. Pleased, Pennington circles Monica, noting approvingly that she did not yet shave her head on demand. Now that you have sworn obedience, prove it. Go to the bathroom and shave your head completely bald. You have 30 minutes. Heart sinking but not daring to object again, Monica numbly walks to the bathroom. With trembling hands, she slowly begins passing the electric shaver across her scalp, erasing her shoulder-length locks. Tufts of her hair fall to the tile floor. Staring at the stranger reflecting back in the mirror, Monica finishes shaving every last wisp from her head. She is fully exposed and vulnerable now, stripped of the one shred of identity she had left. Monica chokes back tears, steeling herself as she changes into the demeaning French maid uniform Pennington had earlier forced her to wear for his guests. She feels his power over her as never before. Returning to Pennington's guard room, Monica stands nakedly before him, devoid of not just hair, but self-respect. I have complied and await your further commands, sir, she utters weakly, extinguished of her former identity. Grinning as he takes in Monica's now subservient appearance, Pennington orders her outside to wash his sports car on the front driveway until it gleams spotlessly. Monica silently proceeds outside, feeling neighbors' eyes on her bizarre exposed state. As Monica scrubs the car on full display, she feels true humiliation having lost her identity and privacy. Just then, Mr. Pennington emerges and barks new orders. From now on, you will visit the barber weekly to keep your head shaved smooth to a polished shine at all times. He then hands her a bag, smirking. And you will wear the enclosed makeup and accessories with proper decorum, of course. Nodding silently, Monica returns inside to open the bag. She gasps, finding heavy over-the-top makeup and demeaning attire she guesses is intended for a sissified French maid parody. Realizing she brought this on herself through weak acquiescence, Monica resignedly applies the thick, garish makeup. She then dons the absurd outfit, feeling the last shreds of inner pride and dignity drain away. Studying herself in the mirror, Monica no longer recognizes the subjugated shell of a person staring back. But this is her life now, an increasingly debased servant existing by her master's whim. Survival means total surrender. Over the next few weeks, Monica falls into a routine of menial chores by day, then dressing up each night in full sissy regalia to serve guests at Mr. Pennington's poker games and parties. Laughter and taunts batter her last reserves of self-worth. As days blur by, Monica feels her old identity fading away. She now lives for each small word of praise from Pennington and Callahan, the only validation that cuts through her ingrained shame. She will do anything asked to somehow prove her worth. As Monica's routine of 24-7 servitude and humiliation logs into a second month with no escape, Mr. Pennington notices she now goes about her tasks stone-faced, seemingly numbed to mistreatment that would break most. Smile when serving me or guests, Pennington snaps one evening. 
Your sullen and gloomy appearance won't do. When Monica robotically forces an empty smile, it looks absurd combined with her garish makeup and sissy outfit. Days later, Pennington informs Monica with a sneer, I've decided that you are forbidden from leaving the grounds without permission from here on. My extra servant's quarters will be your new permanent home when off duty. And so it continues day after long, nightmarish day of serving guests' needs and cleaning the estate. In the few off hours when Monica isn't paraded around in her demeaning outfits, she lays despairing on the cot squeezed inside her claustrophobic servant's room. Each morning before dawn, Monica robotically applies layers of outlandish makeup and wigs before dressing in sissy attire, increasingly embellished with lace, satin, and ruffles. She feels her sanity fracturing along with her identity, surviving only to beg more increasingly cruel demands from uncaring masters. Monica spirals into even deeper levels of captivated horror, feeling she's being conscripted into an eternal risque parody of her former dignified human self. After months suffering exploitation, Monica learns the wealthy businessman she works for was arrested for bribery, corruption, and shady dealings. Police uncover his illicit empire is crumbling. With her tormentor finally in custody, Monica works up the courage to give her own statement to authorities about the abuse and blackmail she endured while in Pennington's employ. The lead investigator listens sympathetically as Monica describes sexual harassment, physical threats, and psychological manipulation she experienced before essentially becoming Pennington's captive servant. Monica admits she was too afraid of losing her job and livelihood to come forward previously. But now, with Pennington going to prison, she boldly steps out of the shadows. In the ensuing trial, Monica bravely takes the stand to recount specifics of exploitation she witnessed. Her testimony helps secure maximum charges against the disgraced tycoon. Relieved to close this traumatic chapter, Monica looks ahead to a brighter future. She enrolls in night classes, determined to gain skills providing financial independence on her own ethical terms. In time, Monica finds gratifying work advocating for vulnerable women as a social worker. She still grapples with psychological scars but feels empowered helping others escape abusive predicaments, thus finally redeeming her own painful past.